Hi, so I just want to start this video off saying that the reason I made this video is from all the negative attention that I and the center line have gotten um, online so far. And people um, have a lot of misconceptions about it. They think it's really dangerous. They think that it's dumb. And they think that I'm dumb for continuing to use it. Um, so the reason I'm making this video today is just kind of explaining that I do know what I'm doing. And I want to show people just how the center line works going through the boat. And that it is different than they think it is and then it's not as dangerous as they think it is. Uh, so here, watch the rest of this video and you'll get the full story here on the center line. So here we are, I'm finally making the uh, the infamous center line video. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys um, basically the purposes of the center line, why we use it, and why we continue to use it. Um, and I wanna start off this video by saying that I'm not in any way condoning the use of it. I don't want everybody to start using it, so don't think that. Um, I just wanna to explain to you why I still use it um, even after you guys have all you know, told me all your feelings about it, that's for sure. Um, but so we're gonna go over safety, uh, we're gonna go over uses, advantages, disadvantages, and uh, yeah, so enjoy. All right, the first thing we're gonna go over here is how the center line actually attaches to the boat. Um, so down here, we have a cam strap that's attached to a D-ring down below. The center line runs through that cam strap, attaches really tightly, comes in here, goes all the way around the first thwart, over the top of the second thwart, and all the way around the third floor as well, coming back and attaching the same way back here. So one of the best uses of the center line and why we love it so much is that your front two paddlers can actually have a really large aid in high siding. Um, it gives you the ability to high side a lot harder than you actually could in any other raft. What happens is the front two paddlers can let go of the paddle with one hand, reach down and grab the center line, and actually high side out over the boat way harder. So I wanted to go over some of the safety concerns that you've had about the center line running through the boat and people being in the boat with it. Um, I have never seen somebody get stuck in the center line from anywhere around here. Well, um, while most people are paddling, um, you know, we're all sitting out here, right? A lot of you have to quit tucked underneath the front of the boat here, out here paddling. Um, nobody's ever gotten their hand stuck here. Nobody's ever gotten their butt stuck here. Nobody's ever gotten their foot stuck here. Uh, you know, when people fall out, they just fall out. Uh, I've never seen something stop somebody. I've never seen somebody physically get stuck in there in a way that was dangerous at all. I've never even seen it happen before. The only thing I've seen before is this keep you from going in. I've seen a lot of people going in and about to fall out, grab onto the center line and they save themselves. Um, it also works really big for people getting into the boat. Um, if you have somebody who's not quite as mobile and they have a hard time getting into the raft, um, coming up here, if you can, uh, you know, say you're down in the water, you have the perimeter line right here, you pull yourself up. All you have to do is be able to reach the center line and your money, you're in the boat, no problem. Um, I still haven't been able to find a dangerous situation or a case where somebody has gotten stuck in the center line from right here. Um, as I said before, if your leg goes under here, you just stand up, you're out. If you turn in, if your leg goes under, your leg goes over. There's no, people just don't get stuck in here. It's not a thing. So I want to go over how the guide sits in the boat here. Um, we do things a whole lot differently. You know, a lot of companies out there will have their guide sitting in the back of a craft, back here, feet underneath the fort, doing their guiding from this position. Um, and this is great. I love that you guys do this. Um, but we do things significantly different here. And I feel like it adds a lot of different tactical abilities to the guide um, as well as giving an extra seat or a little bit more room for more paddlers. The way that we guide with the center line is back here like this. Leg goes underneath the center line, right here. Other leg goes on the far outside of the boat, dragging in the water. And it gives you a higher ability to steer the boat. A better ability, a stronger ability 
to turn the boat. It is easier for me to by myself turn the entire raft from back here than it is for a regular guide sitting right there. I have a higher uh, technical ability, a higher leverage sitting right here than a regular guide does sitting here or here. Okay. Um, and now there's been a lot of safety concerns about this strap over this leg and that it's tying your leg into the raft. And that's not the case at all. Um, the only way that this thing keeps me in the boat is if I want it to. If I'm holding up on it, if I'm putting pressure from my heel up, holding myself in, it's the only way that this happens. At any point, I can let go completely. I can go out this way and what happens? Leg just goes straight over if I want to. If I have to go out this way, it goes out and just pulls straight out. I can just stand up straight off my leg. I don't have to move it. I don't have to do anything. Um, this also helps for big bucking waves. We have a pretty famous pose here. Uh, we call it the Buffalo Pose going through Buffalo Rapid because the wave there kicks really hard. And as some of you know, and some of you have seen in other rivers, if you get kicked really hard um, in a raft, you go flying, right? Well, here we reach out, we grab the center line, and we hold like this, and it helps us get that buck through, and it keeps us on the raft, it keeps us in control of the raft, and it keeps us with our paddlers. We'll go over a little bit more on the river here in a little bit about my ability to steer the boat from here and to uh, stay in control the entire time from here. Um, now, it does change things up a lot. Um, obviously, I'm not paddling quite as much as the other paddlers are, um, unless I really need to. In which case, I'll sit a little bit more straight and I'll lean out here and I'll put my extra paddler on the left side, or if you're a left-hander, the opposite. Um, so, we'll go over a few more things here shortly on the water and uh, yeah, keep watching. So as I was talking before, um, sitting in this guide position right here in the very stern of the boat versus the side over here, there's a huge leverage difference that you can get um, back here. So if you come in and sit just like this, like I was showing you earlier, um, it gives me the ability to lean out in both directions and get a larger stroke than you would be able to sitting over here on the side. So um, if I want to turn the boat left, I can reach way out here in one stroke move the boat with a whole lot more power than I would be able to if I was sitting on one side or the other. And that is even more so on my backstroke. I can reach behind me and not worry about falling into the river because I am choosing for the center line to hold me in place right here. Um, that is a huge difference when it comes to guiding and an incredible ability to get that angle straight as you're heading into big water. Um, I can keep my paddle in the water right here and rudder in and have a better sight picture of the angle that I want to hit the river or the wave at and I just it's really really nice and it's not that I need it it's not that I can't guide from over here it's that I can do it better from this position right here that is why I choose to continue to guide back here with the center line so now that you've kind of seen how the center line runs to the boat, what it does and kind of how we do things differently, I wanted to go over uh, my experience as a guide um, just so you guys can tell that I'm not just some rookie coming off the street. Um, this will be my 10th season here um, in 2019 guiding uh, for a company and the company that I work for has been running the center line in their boats for uh, over 30 years now. And it is an absolutely amazing system. It has been working this entire time. There haven't been any injuries. Um, from the center line, it's just not its not a thing. I know that there's a lot of perceived danger out there, um, but I wanted to stress that it's not just me, I'm not the only one who does it. Um, thousands of people go down the river a year with this. People flip, people dump truck, it happens. No injuries from the center line. Um, so I wanna go over a few things, um, and I wanna kinda go on your guys' side a little bit on it, some bad things that happen from the center line. Um, pretty much the only bad thing I can come up with is low siding. Um, every once in a while, if someone does kinda get knocked out of seat and doesn't have or they're not in good position, um, they can reach out and grab that per, or that center line and they can actually end up hard low siding as opposed to hard high siding. Um, so that is one negative with it. Um, another negative with it uh, that I can talk about is a more shallow um, deadfall river or a creek, something that has a lot of limbs and trees in it. Um, if the raft were to end up upside down, that center line might get snagged on some tree branches or some limbs or something out there. Um, but that is actually a case where I even know that I wouldn't run the center line in that river um, just because it has that option of happening. Um, that is also a situation where I might not just run that river because those same deadfall twigs, branches might be something that I could get entrapped on with my leg or arm or whatever. Um, 
That being said, those are kind of the only downfalls I can see um, of the center line. I, myself and a bunch of other people have been thinking and trying to figure out what is going on with it and what is <laughs> so um, scary to you guys. And I think it's just that you guys aren't actually taking the time to look at it and see that it's a tight strap versus a loose strap. Um, the center line is absolutely amazing for clipping gear too. Um, I've gone out on trips that didn't have a center line and we're running NRS straps around Thor's and then clipping stuff to those NRS straps. Um, it's just not super easy. It's not easy to get to. It's not easy to detach if you need to go do something really quick. Um, the center line running through the middle of the boat is amazing for clipping gear too. You can just carabiner stuff on there right away. It's super easy, super quick, on and off. It's very nice to use. Um, some people have said that if I can't high side or if I can't steer a boat without the center line that I shouldn't be guiding. Um, and I want to stress that it's not that I can't do that. Uh, so that this helps us do it better. It would help anybody do it better. Um, and I mean, I've guided boats without them before. I know what it's like. There's a difference between having to do it and wanting to do it. And I want to use the center line. I don't have to use the center line. I've been doing this for a long time and I know the difference. Okay. Um, I've been thinking a lot, a lot about it. I've been thinking about entrapment hazards in my boat. I've been thinking about the clean line principle and you know, the different parts of that. And as I looked around my boat and what's going on in it, I actually saw higher entrapment hazards from things like dry bags, coolers, um, even throw bags that are attached to the boat in there. All right, now that we've actually had a chance to show the center line, how it works, what is different about it compared to other guiding styles, I was wondering if anybody has any actual questions as to how it works. Um, you know, if I didn't cover any bases that you wanted covered, um, please drop a question about it or a comment about it down below and I'd be happy to go over that at a later point. Um, if you've actually made it this point into the video, uh, thank you for watching, thank you for understanding, and uh, just let me know what you think. I mean, I know there's going to be some people out there that still don't like what I have to say about it, but um, hopefully this helps them kind of understand what is going on and why it's not as dangerous as some people think it is. Um, but thank you for watching and see you next week.